Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of things that you guys may want to take a look at. There is no show and tell for this week. We just have basically some blogs and things that you guys would definitely find interesting. Getting started, if you go over to the blender.org website, you would notice that down here within the developers blog, we have a developers blog that deals with the asset browser workshop and the outcomes for the asset browser workshop workshop so let's simply take a look at that and see a couple of things that you guys may need to know about this one so the asset browser is one of the main targets for blender 3.0 release and of course it does have a couple of complexities several things that you know has to come to it and if you take a look at these there have been a couple of uh, related blogs that was released before now so one of them dealt with the asset manager where the whole idea of how assets will be treated the things that will be regarded as asset data blocks and all that stuff now this blog actually dealt a lot with the explanation of how these things would work and furthermore we also got another blog that dealt with the pose library where we talked about the pose library version 2 we looked at how the pose library would be influenced and how this ties up with the asset manager and after that we did see a blog that dealt with the asset browser project update and within this time we started seeing a much more practical fruition of what the asset manager in quotes the asset browser is supposed to look like so right here we started noticing how the workflow was going to look like we saw a couple of demos so how you know the way dragging and dropping is going to work and we did see some sort of collision that dealt more with surface snapping. We also looked at several implementations that was also going to be coming with this. We talked about the whole idea of how you can share this and also current scope and things to come and that uh, this was very nice and going back we can see that there's a whole lot of things that had come you know full circle and right here is a complete write-up of what the asset browser workshop looks like so there's a status section that deals with what this looks like right now so for those who would like to also test this currently there's an experimental build which is available for the asset browser for those who like to test this so if you go over to the link which i'm going to put in the description you'll be able able to find it and uh, you can download and start working with it. So the asset browser and the pose library would be coming hand in hand and for those who like to download these and test it out and play with it, there's definitely going to be this link in the description where you can check it. And of course there are workshop goals and these were goals that was defined prior to the beginning of the project and you can also see that these included the targeted release for 3.0, there's also the technical specification for how the asset browser was going to look like, evaluation and improvement of design with a number of stakeholders and at the same time they had to look at the product vision and of course there's a product scope. So within the product scope, there's a couple of things that can work right now and some things that will probably be, you know, future plans for the asset browser. So right here, you can see some stories that you might want to see. There's actually an entire list for this one. So if you want to take a look at this, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can see. And for all of these ones, the green tag simply means that everybody agrees for this to be happening right now. And many of the stories are things that might probably, like I said earlier, may not make it to the asset browser at this point. So if you want to read more about this, you want to see some Q&As, you want to see what objections are, you want to see what people are putting forward for the asset browser, I'm going to put this link as well in the description so you can check it out. And alongside with this, there's an asset navigation and organization, the way that you get to upload stuff or the way you get to store things and the way that the asset browser actually arranges this thing virtually is totally different and right now like we've also talked about earlier the folks at blender are actually using the asset browser in production as we speak moving forward you might want to also take a look at some asset bundles and how this relates we've already looked at how you can import this and also how you can make tweaks to this and the list actually goes on and on for brush management and asset browser you might want to check that out some terminologies like we've looked at before that deals with marking asset clearing asset asset library tools tool presets and all also brushes, how you can deal with assets, how you can append assets and also how you can link them up, the asset identifiers and references and so on and so forth. So this is a long blog and to the best of my knowledge, I think this is more like a summary of everything that was discussed within the workshop. So if you want to get a full grasp of what the asset browser will look like and all the outcomes of the whole workshop then this is probably something that you might want to take a look at and of course if you want to see some of the things that might be coming to 3.0 as targets you may also want to take a look at this we've already seen the placement tool in action before but this is currently not available there's also a milestone to actually get the local asset browser finished and uh, ready to go so just in case you want to work with that that is also supposed to be available alongside that there is the asset linking up pending the post library also will be coming with 3.0 initial 
official standard asset library and also extending the ad menus with the asset browser so tons of things for you guys to come through and read up and for those who are excited about this one link to this is going to be in the description and moving forward there's also a very cool workshop going on here and this is more like a sub module sort of meeting that deals with geometry nodes so for those who like to read up on some of the notes you want to see some of the things that they're talking about maybe you want to get into the whole idea the whole thing that was discussed within the meeting notes you may want to also come through and check this one out and while we speak about the geometry node there is also a workshop that was just concluded some time ago that deals with a node workshop so you might also want to check this as uh, this sort of covered a couple of things there's an agenda for several days that this was covered and you could see them right here there's a couple of pictures that you might want to see just in case you want to see you know the proposed things coming to particles proposed things also coming to solvers and also simulation and these things are basically stuff that deals with nodes and hopefully these are targeted for future node sections within the geometry nodes that exist with blender there is some very cool update that deals with voxel remesh for those who are into remeshing with voxel so contrary to previous times where you have to go in and turn on the smooth shading right now the output automatically shows up with smooth shading and moving forward there is also another cool update that deals with cycles and at this point there is an add layer view option to disable motion blur in the filter panel and this is definitely going to come in very handy for those working with cycles and probably want to make a couple of changes when trying to make their renders look good so with all this said let's take a look at some community news for this week so this week we do have a couple of uh, very interesting community news so last week we did talk about this beautiful add-on known as the bugger pie okay so you guys uh, saw the video you guys saw it you know we talked about it amazing tool very lovely I personally would recommend this to anyone who would like to definitely get that all-in-one tool that it can work with although the downside to this is it currently is in beta so there's a couple of things that might crash and some things might not probably work the way you expect them to work but by far this is a very cool tool and i would simply suggest that you take a look at it we talked about this one within the weekly free friday so just in case you didn't see this one i'm gonna put a link in the description or probably put a card or an end note so that you can check it out and this deals with the post ussr building everything right here was done directly with the geometry nodes it's currently supported for blender 2.93 and you can tweak these to your heart content so for those that are into playing with geometry nodes you want to automatically generate some buildings with it you might also find this one very interesting you can simply go ahead and grab it and start working with it and while we talk about things that you might want to grab and start working with there's also some very nice updates that is available this week so there's this very cool add-on that i did come across and it is called the sign pack so it comes with pre-animated camera movements and uh, for those who like to get some very cool clean camera movements you probably don't want to deal with all of those key framing you know you don't want to spend so much time doing this this comes with a truckload of camera movements that you can get behind so in case you're looking for cinematic shots and you're thinking about how how to recreate them right now this pack has it all figured out so you can focus on the art and not on the technicalities of making your camera move Lewis Martins has also gone through to make this one available for older versions of blender and also newer versions of blender so you might want to come through and check it out and when we talk about things that you might want to check out I did come across this beautiful beautiful add-on this add-on is totally for free Toto has made this one available you probably know him as Toshi CG and this is good it is currently free but of course if you find it very interesting to actually fund him you can proceed to fund him with a couple of bucks and this one is free and what this does is it converts the rigs into game rigs so if you're into games and you've been wondering how can you convert your rigs to game rigs and probably you want all that squashing and stretching things to occur or maybe you're coming from any other DCC app like Maya Cinema 40 and so on and you would like to also move things these add-on would probably get you from A to Z so for those who would like to also check this one out I'm also gonna pull this link in the description so you can check it out and he has also made a couple of tutorials to guide you through them so just in case you're into games you might find this one quite rewarding and while we talk about things that you might find quite rewarding we also have this very novelty pretty nice add-on so this add-on is made by one of the very cool guys that we've talked about before so this is a call out title add-on so in most cases you want to get that call out effect so contrary to spending so much time in tools like after effects fusion or maybe da vinci trying to create these things you can now do all of these things directly in blender so this would save you all of that time so it's very cool to see that this is currently available and you can use this in blender however you choose something else to check out is a challenge from cg boost so the folks at cg boost have created this beautiful challenge that deals with the title life on a train there's a couple of prizes to be won they are 
rules, there are certain things that you need to deliver and there are also judging criteria just in case you want to check it out. So the live on the train idea here is for you to illustrate a small description that they've given and I think the whole idea here is for you to also create something that is fun, something that you can put on your portfolio and also stand a chance of winning some very good prizes. Now, I wouldn't expect a lot of you guys to put so much pressure on this, but for those who would like to join a community or probably you just want to explore or maybe have much more like a direction to creating something, then these might definitely come in very, very handy. So tons of cool things that we've talked about today. And for those who like to take a look at any of these things I've talked about, we're definitely going to put a link in the description so you can do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with your tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace